Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We are glad that you are here this morning at North Citrus Christian Church in Citrus Springs, Florida. And we want to welcome you that are online as well. And as well, those that are in the parking lot listening to us on 87.9 on the uh, FM dial. Uh, we're glad that you're here for one purpose, and that is to worship God. That's why we're here. And, uh, you know, I, I have shared with uh, several people that have been watching online or, or happened to miss a Sunday or whatever and said, I'm catching it up at home. They said, but it's just not the same. It's just not the same of seeing other people and interacting with other people and being a part of being in person and uh, just being a part. So uh, if, you're, if you're back at home, find a time that you can work your way back to getting here in person because we miss you. OK, we miss you back at home, but we are glad that everybody's here and uh, glad to see new faces uh, today uh, along with that. We're going to get started uh, by singing together, What a Mighty God We Serve. Let's all be standing and let's sing this uh, beautiful chorus, What a Mighty God We Serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Let's do a clap here. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Okay, you need to smile at least that you haven't smiled at this morning, okay? So from a distance, but find two people you haven't hey, I've smiled been there. at this morning. And uh, go from there. Good morning. Good morning, y'all. Oh. Oh, Who's that cute person in between you two? All right, once you've got your smiles and your waves in, you may go ahead and take a seat where you're at. We do want to officially welcome you this morning. If you are visiting with us, perhaps for the first time or second time, we want to encourage you to take a little welcome card that's just right there in front of you in the little pocket in front of you. Uh, we would love just to have a record of uh, your tenants, just name, contact information. If you could do that for us, that would be great. Uh, we simply ask that you just place those in some of the boxes that are on either side of the auditorium, the little wooden boxes. And also in the back, that's also where our regular attenders and members uh, give their offerings. Uh, I am pleased to say that we have uh, met the goal successfully for our camera fund. So that, that has been uh, taken care of. And then uh, now, now the pressure's on, Floyd, to, to get that whole process started. There's going to be a, a ways to get things rolling on that end. But uh, hopefully before too long down the road, we'll be doing a little bit more than just an iPod on a little thing and we'll have a whole camera set up and have things uh, more streamlined and, and getting the message out to our community. So we're glad to uh, be a part of that and thank you everybody uh, who has played a part of that. Today is a very special day. Today is an opportunity for you to get to learn more uh, about the church with our foundations class, uh, Discovering Membership. This is open to anyone uh, who wants to come. We've got a lunch prepared. Uh, so we'll have lunch together back in uh, Citrus Cafe and then an opportunity to uh, stay for a class that just tells you more about the church from a biblical standpoint and uh, our belief system based upon the, the Word of God. So class will go from uh, about lunch time until about 2, 2.30 in the afternoon. So this is an opportunity. So even if you came this morning and you didn't necessarily plan to stay, you are invited to stay, okay? So if you're saying, you know, I think I can do that. I can, I can you know, squeeze in a couple hours here early afternoon. Uh, it be a great time just to stay. We've got plenty of packets and plenty of food back there uh, to make that happen. So please, if you are interested in learning more about the church, uh, this is a great opportunity for you to have lunch with us and take the class in today as well. Also keep in mind, two weeks from today, we are still on target. We're, we're working towards uh, uh, Fellowship Meal. Now we're looking to do some things safely, how we're going to make this happen. But to keep in mind, uh, we're going to do a little barbecue uh, lunch with uh, the church providing hamburgers, hot dogs, chips, and drinks. And then other people kind of pitching in. So that's two weeks uh, from today. So keep that in mind as we move forward. 
Uh, many of you have been asking about uh, Brenda uh, Plants. Uh, she did have her uh, operation on her uh, wrist in this past, uh, past uh, week. And I understand there is a card going around, is that correct? Over here? Okay, so just keep passing that card around, if you will, um, so that everybody gets an opportunity to sign that. Uh, George was here this morning to, uh, to do the Bible study with the adult Bible study, um, but, but currently she's having some swelling uh, in her hand, which was expected from the surgery, but the swelling's not getting better. It's getting worse instead of better. So he feels like he needs to be, be back with her, and I, I agree 100%, so I told him to go home, take care of her. Um, so uh, hopefully that will work out with uh, getting that all, all arranged, but he is back home with her uh, this morning. But let's please uh, by make sure, sure we uh, continue to get that card signed and filled out. In any way you can reach out to them, they would greatly, greatly appreciate it. All right, and then also uh, don't forget about the different opportunities on the back as well. Uh, we have uh, coffee mugs back there. In fact, everybody that comes to the Foundations class today will get a coffee mug. So there's a motivation for you. Come to Foundations, you don't have to pay $5 for the coffee mug. You can just come and get a free one, okay? Or get, get an extra one if you've already bought one. Uh, you'll see some new name tags that people are wearing today as well. So name tags have been on order. And if you're interested in that, as along with uh, plaques, uh, memorial plaques, or, or apparel with the, the logo, all those are available, okay? If you have any questions on the apparel, to see uh, Doreen, okay? She's the one that, raise your hand so Doreen knows who, oh, you're the only one on that side, okay? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so we're all good to go. All right, well, let's, uh, let's uh, start off with uh, a word of prayer. Folks, before we go too much further, obviously, um, we're experiencing a lot in the world in which we live. And, uh, you know, sometimes people say it goes without saying, but I think it needs to be said. We as Christians need to be praying. And uh, that doesn't need to go without saying. We need to, uh, I don't know how you pray. I don't know if it's just at mealtime or if you keep a prayer journal or if it just as you're, you're driving or as you, you do different things, you stop and you say your prayers, please uh, keep, keep our word in our, in our prayers. Uh, pray for wisdom and what we uh, can do and what we can say where we live and reaching out to others and trying to make a difference uh, because God does hear those prayers. And uh, by all means, we want to lay those before uh, the throne. So let's pray this time. Father God, I'm again reminded of the scripture that says to be still and to know uh, that I am God. Lord, forgive us when we just get jumped in with this debate or that debate and conversation. and We do more talking than we do praying when you call us just to be still and to put everything in your hands. Father, do give us wisdom as to when we need to speak up and the things that we need to express on our hearts and from God's word and, and how we express that in truth and in love. And Father, also give us wisdom when we need to step back and just kind of keep these things in our hearts and our minds and, and pray and, and try to make a difference where we can. Let our actions uh, speak louder than our words. Father, be with uh, the health care crisis in this country. Be with those that... Uh, are dealing with that even as we speak. Father, I pray that you be with uh, so many different things happening in, in our world today and that you just provide your direction as only you can do through your Son, Jesus Christ, and through your Holy Spirit. Lord, make your Holy Spirit real uh, in, in this world today. I know that the Spirit's only as strong as we allow Him to be, but Lord, help us to call on your power uh, to make a difference. Father, just now I'm thinking of those that are unable to be with us today. Uh, many on my mind, uh, I'm thinking specifically of George and Brenda. Lord, I just pray that you be by their side as she recovers uh, from, her, uh, from her surgery. And Lord, I just pray that you be with others uh, that are out there that uh, are looking ahead for their lives and purpose and meaning. I'm thinking of the, the kids with the schools uh, coming up and, and decisions to be made and trying to figure out how all that's going to piece together and the teachers that are involved in that process. Father, I thank you for those that uh, will be staying today after church as well uh, with lunch and, Lord, as we learn more about your word. Help us now as we go into a time of worship just to give you the praise 
and the glory and the honor that you so richly deserve. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. God's name is going to hold forth over anything else that's done. And uh, thank God for that. Because at the name of the Lord, many things will happen and uh, he is in control. Amen? Amen. So we're going to sing together, Blessed Be the Name. on God and how great he is, you know, I, that's where I find my comfort, folks. I have seen several signs over uh, since this whole crisis has started, and, and remember, we put it up outside, faith over fear, prayer over panic, you know, and, and let's have our faith in God, uh, because he is greater uh, than anything that we face on uh, this side of heaven, and so let's sing about how great is our God. Let all the earth rejoice. 
to you. Uh, we would gentlemen with uh, mask and gloves, so you no need to touch the tray. It's just a simple double cup that's in the communion tray, so just simply pick up the double cup. The juice will be on top, the bread will be on the bottom, and then at your own time and your meditation, then you can take that uh, at the right time. So let's sing together, uh, When I Survey uh, the Wondrous Cross. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
been thinking a lot about uh, the, the summer. Uh, how many of you feel like the summer just never has, a, has a come yet? It just hasn't, has it? It's just not the same, is it? You know, you, you plan trips or you, you go here and then all of a sudden that gets canceled or that gets canceled. Or you ought to see my calendar over the last three months. <laughs> All the things that I had planned to do and all the X's through the calendars as we go. The, the, the seasons just aren't what we expect them to be. In fact, I heard somebody say that it's more like bummer than it is summer. Um, so, you know, we have to make the best of that. But, you know, when I think about the seasons of the year, too, I am encouraged by what the, the scriptures has to, pay, to say to us. And going back into the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, a wise man uh, by the name of Solomon, shares with us some of these words. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Now, I know that we all have been affected in different ways from this crisis that has happened in our world today, ways that we never even imagined that we would be affected. And, and we, we keep kind of waiting to see what's going to be next. Uh, I've come to a conclusion that there is no going back to normal, uh, because there's no normal to go back to at this stage. And I've also come to the conclusion that I, I'm not going to just wait around for somebody else to decide for me what is the new normal. So I, I've come to the conclusion that as a Christian, I have a responsibility to set my standards based upon God's word and to create my normal my own normal based upon God's word. I, in fact, what am I saying? I, I'm trying to find myself in this season of time. I don't want the seasons just to pass and life just to pass by and wonder, well, what happened? You know, we, were we victims in all of this? No, I want to find my place and I want to find my purpose in this world. And the time is now in the midst of this season, in the midst of this bummer of the summer. Uh, we need to make the best of the time that we have. There's no sitting on the fence. It's time for us to choose this now moment to make an eternal difference in the lives of everyone you meet. And I'm encouraged by you all coming out today and saying, you know what, we're, we're gonna be here. We're gonna be here in person because this is important to us to worship God. This is important to be on mission for God, to understand our purpose uh, in life. And this season of time is very important. Besides the season of the year, what season do you find yourself in today? Perhaps you've got lots of things swirling around in your heart, your mind, and your soul. You're wondering about family, you're wondering about work, you're wondering about how this is all going to turn out in this world, the crisis that we're in. For just a minute, I want us to focus on the season that Jesus Christ underwent for us on the cross of Christ very difficult time of his life, but yet he approached that season with courage, with strength. And you know, there's another part of that, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, comes from verse 11. And it said that God has made everything beautiful in his time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning. Whatever season you find yourself in this morning, know that that season that comes through Jesus Christ is a season that will encourage us and strengthen us to continue to carry on. Let's pray. Father, as we take the time now to once again remember you in a symbolic fashion with the juice representing your blood, and the bread representing your body. Father, help us to realize that that was a very difficult season for Jesus Christ to go through. But Lord, he took the path before us to give us courage and strength so that we can take the path that we're currently on. And that you will embolden us and encourage us to take hold of this season, this time here and now, and to make a difference while we can. Help us to search our hearts, search our minds, and ultimately our eternal souls as we spend this time together with you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
We're going to use a, a chorus called He is Lord. This will be our uh, sermon prep chorus, just to kind of prepare our hearts and minds for the message together today. So follow along with us, if you will, please. We'll sing this through twice. He is Lord. Today we start a brand new sermon series, uh, simply entitled, Got Jesus? Question mark. Because I can't think of anything that the world needs more right now than Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I encourage you to take a hold of your uh, program, and the insert of your program are the sermon notes today. So please take the time to follow along with those, and please, please feel free to fill in the blanks as we move forward. In this crazy, upside-down world we live in, it is imperative that we get across the most important message that has ever been throughout the course of time. Jesus Christ is Lord. And that's so important. So, you've know, got Jesus. Now, some of you probably remember, uh, going back a few years, the old Got Milk commercials. Y'all remember those? And, and the old milk mustaches and stuff. Now, I... That's probably when I first started loving milk, when I was about that age and it came out. And I do the little milk mustache and say, look at me, look at me, i got a milk mustache, you've got milk. And I've loved milk ever since that day. But how important it is that we get hold of that is, is it, and perhaps, perhaps we maybe should in some ways have the same philosophy with Jesus, you know, that we all need Jesus. So maybe we all need Jesus mustaches. I don't know, maybe, maybe that would help if all of us would have a Jesus mustache and then that Dale, there you are. You're in good shape over there. And, and, and beard to go with it. So uh, if we all looked like Jesus, then maybe the world would get a better understanding of, of what Jesus looks like, right? And maybe an understanding of, of who Jesus is. If we if we all had Jesus mustaches and we could kind of walk around and make Jesus, you know, the most popular person on the face of this earth. Well, <coughs> interesting. You know, I, I guess as Christians, we, we should look like Jesus, shouldn't we? Now, no, that doesn't mean you have to don a, a Jesus mustache, but that does mean in our words and our, in our actions and everything we do that we need to demonstrate to other people who Jesus is. Why is that important? That's important because we have been chosen in fact, we are the chosen. God has put his stamp on us, and he has invited us to come uh, to understand who Jesus is, and we have accepted that invitation, and because of that, we are chosen by him. I want to take a look, first of all, what's called the parable. That's your first fill-in there. The parable from Matthew 22, verses 2 through 14. If you have your Bibles with you, I encourage you to turn to those. There should be a Bible maybe in the pew pocket in front of you. We're going to look at a whole passage today uh, concerning the parable of the wedding feast from Matthew chapter 22 in verses 2 through 14. And Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come. But they refused to come. Then he sent more servants, and he said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. I mean, if you, bring, if you have food, don't come, right? My, my oxen and fattened calf, they've been butchered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. 
but they paid no attention. And they went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants. They mistreated them and even killed them. And the king was enraged. He sent his army and he destroyed those murderers and burned their city. And then verse 8, he says to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. And so I want you to go to the street corners and I want you to invite to the banquet everyone and anyone that you find. And so the servants went out into the streets and they gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guest, he noticed there was a man who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. The king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Folks, we are continuing our series along uh, Core 52 books. We're going to be uh, having more of those available soon. Uh, for those of you that want to be on a target, we're working our way through uh, uh, various uh, important sections of the scripture. And uh, today we're going to look at election and predestination. Now, I have to be honest with you, my daughter, uh, who uh, helps run the Facebook page here at uh, North Centers Church, she asked me, she goes, what is your sermon on Sunday? And I said, well, it's about election and predestined. She goes, election? Oh, no, not again. I don't want to hear any more about the election. Please don't tell me anything about that. And I said, no, 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 not that election, okay? You're going to hear plenty more about that election in the next hundred or so days ahead. But no, this is about what the Bible tells us, how God has chosen us, with the understanding of election and predestination, not, not the election, not the political process. I'm not going to get po political this morning, okay? We're going to talk about God, and we're going to talk about how God has placed his stamp on you as the chosen. Remember, God didn't have to create you. Folks, that's a humbling thought. If God chose not to create you, guess what? Poof. You wouldn't be here. It wasn't your choice to come into this world. He chose to create you because he loves you. And he has a purpose and a plan for your life. I can't help but to think that so many times we feel like we have an entitlement in this world. And the society has taught us this. That we have a right to do what we want to do and go where we want to go and be who we want to be. And, and, and yes, we, we're given free will. We're given free choice. But folks, we have been created on the face of this earth with a purpose. And if it wasn't for God, there wouldn't be a man standing there. The same God who brought up the sun, who put the sky into motion, who put the rivers and the mountains into motion is the one who created mankind. And he created us with a purpose. He created us with a reason. And it's not just to survive this crisis or to survive this chaos in this world in which we live. No, his purpose and his plan is created for his purpose and his mission. And we need to understand our point in time today and why we are here. There's so much that's out there. People that think we're created for different reasons. Well, we were created for comfort. You know, I just want to just find comfort in life. And if I can just find comfort, then that, that's some. You know, a lot of people, we were talking about praying earlier in the service and how we need to pray as Christians. Some people don't even think they need to pray unless they need something from God. You know, well, what can I pray for you to? Well, pray for financial fortitude. You know, I, I kind of fell upon some bad times and I need to get back to being strong and, and, and pray for prosperity and pray for good health and pray for this and pray for that. Well, th those are all fine. God hears those prayers, but, but that's not what we were created for. We were created for God's purpose. And if it wasn't for his purpose that we were created, we wouldn't be here. 
So he put us on this earth for a reason. And not only did he put us on this earth for a reason, but he put us on this earth for a specific time frame. Ever walk through the cemetery and see the date of birth on the tombstones? And then see the date of death on the tombstones. And in between those two dates is a dash. And in that dash is a time that God has created us for purpose and meaning. Now I'm glad to say that all of us that are here right now are currently living out our dash. Okay? So it's up to us. We have already know our date of birth. Now it's up to us to live out our dash, understanding his mission for our lives. And that what we seek is not prosperity and not financial fortitude, not comfort on this side of heaven, but treasures in heaven to come. And that, quite honestly, is not popular in today's day and age. In fact, that means as a Christian, you're going to go against the flow. All the fish are going to be going one direction, and you're going to be going the other direction. And you're going to hear encouragement that says, just keep swimming, keep swimming, and keep swimming because we're doing what Jesus calls us to do. Even though it seems like the world is coming down upon us in so many different ways, we need to understand that we are chosen by him. So who are the chosen? It's really a rather simple process of election. Now, you probably will not hear that for the next 100 days, that there's a simple process of election. But according to God's word, there is a simple process of election. And I think it's very important that we clearly understand the scriptures and what the Bible has to say about how this works when we talk about election predestination. First of all, they were invited. They were invited. Everyone is invited to come to know Jesus Christ, our Lord. But it doesn't end there. Not everyone who is invited is chosen. Because in order to be chosen, you have to take some responsibility yourselves. You have to come. So they were invited, and they came. You know, over the years, the principle, our second point there, the principle has kind of laid forth two basic views of election. There are some who may believe uh, that God alone chooses who goes to heaven and who does not, and that man has no choice. Now, I don't know what your upbringing has been. I'm not sure what, what, you, what your personal belief system is. And folks, I respect your upbringing. I respect your personal belief system. But I want to let you know I respect God's word over and above everything else, including my own opinion. Because it's his opinion that counts. So that's one of the belief systems that's out there. But there's nothing biblical that really points out the fact that man has no choice in the matter. And God just says, okay, well, you're going to heaven and you're not. Um, you know, and you just kind of pick and choose. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a, uh, no. That doesn't work. Catch a sinner by his toe? I guess it would be a sinner. It doesn't work that way. That's not how God works in this process. The second view is a biblical view. That God has determined the parameters of salvation. He lays them without in scripture for us. And we get to choose whether or not to enter according to the parameters of salvation. It's up to us to make that choice. We're the ones that take the check mark and say, yes, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Yes, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to be baptized into Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of my sins and for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to live a faithful life to Jesus Christ. And we, in essence, have said, I choose you in return because you have given me this great invitation. You know, I, I think it's a messed up world that thinks, well, you know, I'm going to heaven just because I'm a good person. I'm going to heaven just because, you know, I went back when I was seven years old, I, I, made, I made a little prayer, and, and now that, that's taken care of for all eternity. Now, I haven't, haven't been back in the doors of the church. I haven't lived my life according to God's standard. I, I just live my life the way I want to live it, but, but God's going to take care of me. You know, a good God wouldn't send a, a good person to hell. No, but let me tell you what a good God would do. A good God would provide a way for all people to go to heaven. <laughs> And he has done that through Jesus Christ upon the cross of Christ. 
And it's up to us to follow his standards and understand his perimeters of salvation. So let's keep it simple. It's all about God's invitation. He determines the time and the place and the parameters of a party. It's his invitation. Everyone is invited. You back to the parable of the wedding feast. At first it was just to select few that were invited. And then tried to kind of get their attention, telling them, oh, we're going to have the best food and, and the fattened cattle have been butchered. Everything's ready. Come to the wedding thing. But, you know, people didn't pay any attention. They just kind of went their own way and decided to go off and do uh, this business or off to their field. And they, they could care less. Do we live in a world that's somewhat similar to that today? When we hear God, when we hear Jesus Christ, people don't want to hear that. Or, oh, no, 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 that's okay for you, but don't, 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 don't force that on me. Well, God's simply offering an invitation. He's not going to twist people's arms to go to heaven, but he is going to put an invitation out. And in fact, he, he put that invitation out so far that Jesus stretched out his arms and died for us. His invitation is to all. But let's keep it simple. It's our acceptance that makes a difference. Whether we choose to accept the invitation or not. So, Jim Duncan, I'm glad you're addressing this because I've always kind of wondered about how that works when I hear that term of, of election and, and how we're chosen and, and this beginning to make some sense. I mean, it's important to realize that it's God's will that everybody come to know him. Uh, write this down. If it, you don't have it there. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness. But he is patient towards you, not wishing that anyone should perish, but that all should reach repentance. So you're telling me that I serve a loving God who cares about everybody that he's created on the face of this earth. Exactly. Again, God did not have to create you, but he chose to create you because he has a purpose and plan for your life. And he desires that you accept his invitation. According to scripture, God desires that all people are saved. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. And in order for that to happen... His invitation is to all, but we must respond to an invitation. How many of you have ever received an uh, invitation that has an RSVP notice on it? Well, folks, this is the most important RSVP that you will ever answer. We must RSVP to Jesus. Now, I took two years of French when I was back in high school. Actually, I think French took two years of me. Um, to kind of remember, but I, I think it's responde s'il vous plaît, or something close to that. <laughs> and that's where the RSVP comes from, okay, just in case you were wondering. But this is the idea to please respond. Now, how many of you have ever got an RSVP and you never RSVP'd? Oh, come on, fess up, fess up, how many of you has happened to you? I, I have, to, have to be honest, you know, I, it says, please reply. They want to know just yes or no. It's not that big of a deal. Are you coming? Are you not coming? And you don't tell them anything, okay? You just, you just didn't do it, all right? I wonder how God feels sometimes when he has extended his invitation to everyone that he has created in this whole wide world, and he just simply asks for a simple yes or no. Are you coming or are you not? It's the ultimate invitation that's sealed with the blood of his very own son, Jesus Christ. And he's put that invitation and he's sealed it with the blood of his son out to other people. And people don't even respond. Don't even care to give a response. Not even know I'm not coming. You know, he says, I prefer that you be hot or cold. If anything in the middle is lukewarm, I would spew you out of my mouth. Please. Reply. This is eternity at stake. This is the most important part. Please reply, indicating your commitment to attend. Now, if I were to ask the question, how many of you want to go to heaven? Oh, whoa, there goes the hands up. Yeah, 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 I'm all, I'm all in, I'm all in. And if we were to ask a whole group of people how many people want to go to heaven, boy, you'd see hands go up right and left. But how many of you want to commit 
to what it takes in God's word, according to his standards, according to his authority, to respond to him in a way that gives him the glory. Will you please respond? You see, how we respond is of utmost importance. Interesting enough, kind of uh, in the middle of this parable is a small section. It starts with verse 11 from Matthew chapter 22. It says, when the king came in to see the guest, he noticed a man who was there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. The king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So what are you talking about, Jonathan? What, what does this mean? And here's a man who actually showed up to the banquet. He showed up, but he showed up with the wrong motives. He showed up just to kind of see what was going on. He showed up. He didn't show up to be serious about his commitment to, to Christ. He, he didn't show up to be, be serious about being a part of, of what was happening from here. He just simply showed up. Just thinking that, oh, I'm going to be okay because everybody else is okay. And I'm just going to join this crowd. And they're not going to notice me because I'm not wearing the wedding clothes. I'm not abiding by the standards of the one who invited me. I'm not living according to the standards that are kind of laid out before me. But I, I'm just going to kind of just kind of blend in with everybody else. That will not work. We must live our lives according to God's standards and not our own and according to his responsibility, his authority, and the responsibility that we must take. So here's the clicker when it comes to this whole process of election and predestination. You say, okay, so I, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. Okay, so God has invited everyone. Okay, I, I get that part. He wants everybody to be saved. That, that's, that's scriptural. He doesn't want anybody to um, not come to repentance. He wants everybody to be saved. But yet... There's only going to be certain people that will respond to Christ, and those people become the chosen. That's correct. You say, well, but how does that work? Well, here's the clicker. God knows in advance who will respond. So what are you saying? You, am I, I'm saying God is God enough to know in advance who will respond, and he knows what you'll do before you ever do it. He knows that you're going to accept him. He knows that that's going to be something that you're, you're going to choose. And, and he has set you apart. And he has, in essence, predestined you to make those decisions to come to know Jesus Christ. You say, well, that, that's kind of weird how that works. I mean, God can do anything he wants to do, anytime, any place, anywhere, and with anyone. You got it. Again, let me say that again. God can do anything he wants to do, anytime, any place, anywhere, and with anyone. You know, I always, uh, when we had this uh, science class growing up, I remember middle school and, and high school and going back over the years, and, and you know, people would ask questions like, well, you believe in God? Yeah, so it's like, well, well, God can do anything, huh? Yeah, well, could God make a rock so big that even he couldn't move it? Yes, he could. If he chose to, he could make a rock so big that even he couldn't move it. But he could also choose to move that rock if he wanted to move that rock. You see, God is God, and God knows. God knows what's in your heart. God knows what's in your mind. Now, that doesn't mean that you have no choice in the matter. In fact, it says that he predestines the boundaries of our salvation. He's the one that kind of lays out what is necessary in coming to know him. Uh, from Romans chapter 8 and verses uh, 29 and 30, we read these words. Romans 8, 29 and 30. For we know in all things God works for the good of those who love him, been called according to his purpose. For those that God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Now, folks, before you get too caught up in the, the principle, before you get too caught up in exactly how does this work, how, how does God uh, invite you, and then it just depended upon us to respond, but then he knew we were going to respond in the first place, and how does this all work, how does this all come together? 
He doesn't want us to get caught up in the principle. He wants us to get caught up in the purpose. And the purpose ultimately that we need to focus in on is that we are conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. And folks, if we still find ourselves debating, oh, how does this work, and, and who's called, and who's not called, and, and then we're, we've missed the purpose. Because he wants us to be like Jesus. Now, no, that doesn't mean that you have to go wear a Jesus mustache everywhere you go. But that does mean that we need to be Christ-like everywhere we go. Because we are on mission for him. And we understand that it's God's love that is perfect and universal. And it's not up to question his love as to why he created us. We're simply here for a purpose. And God's love is not only perfect and universal, but God also shows no partiality. It's like, oh, well, I, I pick you because I think you're better looking. Or I pick you because, you know, it's not like you, you line up as you did with kids and you divide up into teams and everybody picks somebody and they all line up and you're wondering if you're going to get picked and then turn at the end of the line. No, God chooses everyone. And as long as you accept that invitation to come to him, he puts you in places for specific reasons, for specific tasks. Throughout the book of the Bible, there are many instances of people who are placed in specific tasks, from Abraham to Jacob, to Pharaoh to David to Josiah to Cyrus to Jeremiah to John the Baptist, Jesus himself, Judas Iscariot, even for a task of betraying the Lord and Savior, the 12 apostles, Paul, Rufus. What am I saying? I'm saying you can put your name in that blank as well. Because you are chosen. And God, too, has called you. And God has a purpose for your life. And perhaps you've wondered that in your entire life. Well, why am I here? What, what, what is my purpose in life anyway? I've just tried to make it through. I, you know, I try to be a good person. I just try to find my way through all the difficulties that come. But I don't know that I've ever understood my purpose. Well, let me talk to you just in brief about these two areas that are very important. Number one, God's general purpose for everyone is for us to glorify God and fulfill his mission. That's on the back side there. Turn your page on your sermon notes. God's general purpose is for us to glorify God and fulfill his mission. So let me say, if you're asking yourself, I, I don't have a purpose. What is my purpose? There's your answer right there, okay? You say, well, well Jonathan, that's not really what I was asking. Okay, I get it. I, I, I know that, okay, so God didn't have to create me. He chose to create me because he has a purpose and a plan for my life. And he loves me. My general purpose is to glorify God, fulfill his mission. I get that. But you must first cross this one off your list before you go any further. Because if we think we're here for different reasons other than that, then we've missed the boat. But then there is a specific purpose. And I want you to write this in. Okay, because it didn't make it onto the notes, but write this in. God's specific purpose revolves around the seasons of our life. Right here, right now, using our gifts, passions, and experiences. Okay, now, Jonathan, you're making a little bit more sense now. So you're saying that I'm not just created like everybody else. That, that I'm different, that I have a specific purpose that God has created me for. And it's, and it's not just for an entire lifetime, but at different seasons of my life, I'm, I've been taken to different places. I've been put in different circumstances, different situations, and God has helped me. At different, I, I can see that from the time maybe I was a child and, and when I didn't have a choice as to who my parents were and, and my upbringing and how I was brought out. And then I see that as I began to make decisions as, as a young adult and began to make decisions and, and you know, was involved in relationships and, 
And some came and some went. And, and then as I began to take on the responsibilities and careers, and, and I can even see that within the life of the church. You know how many people we have uh, uh, seen come through these doors over the last couple of years? Some of those were here for a little season of time. And then they moved on to somewhere else because God was calling them to be somewhere else. And so they would move on to uh, a strange new world like Ocala um, or something like that. Um, you know, or God would have them here for a purpose and now their dash has been completed. And their, their date of death has been written on that thing. You know, seasons of time, God brings us together for seasons. And we're here for a specific reason. I mean, from Washington State to Florida. God brings us here for a season of time. Isn't that right, Ryan? You know, all these things, God moves us, and he moves us to here and there. And, and for different seasons, it's a new chapter. It's a new season. And God's specific purpose revolves around that. He's constantly recreating his purpose where he wants us to be at a certain place at a certain time, using our gifts, using our passions, using our experiences. So next time you wonder about your purpose, please know that you are chosen. And it's up to us to accept his invitation. Because he has chosen you for a general purpose, yes, to be on mission for God. But for a specific purpose in a season of time. And he wants us all to come to him, understanding that it's our faith through Jesus Christ that will see us through. I want to encourage you just briefly today. I ask you during the communion meditation, what season of life do you find yourself in? I want to ask that question again. Because I believe that no matter what season you find yourself in right now, God has a specific purpose for this time and for this place. may not be the season that you chose, you weren't planning to have a bummer of a summer, but here you are. You know, sometimes, I, I, love, I love my daughter. She challenges us in so many ways sometimes. I talk about, well, you know, how come that didn't work out bad? And I was like, I don't know. We just had to kind of like shift gears. And she goes, well, why don't we just start with plan B? Smart. She's pretty smart. Because plan A never seems to work out. And then what happens when plan B doesn't work out, and then C and D, and then she asked me, Dad, what happens if we run out of letters of the alphabet? <laughs> I said, well, hey, I know Greek. Alpha, beta, gamma. God always has another plan. He's always moving us in different seasons and different ways. But I want you to be challenged this morning, first of all, with his general purpose. If you have not taken the step according to his standards, according to his authority through God's word, I challenge you to look in God's word. As it says to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, repent of your past sins, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That is accepting his invitation, choosing to be baptized into Christ in the likeness of his death, burial, and resurrection for the forgiveness of your sins and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and then living faithfully for him. Remember, God will never turn his back on you. Only you can turn your back on God. His invitation is to all. If you've not accepted that general purpose for your life, I encourage you to, first of all, take that check mark and make sure you're good to go. But then secondly, I want you to think about your specific season and what God is calling you to do now. Not tomorrow, not when this crisis is over, not when we find our way to some new normal, but right now, what is God calling you to do? Let's take our faith and let's exercise that over fear and let's continue to prayer and pray over panic and let's find our way forward as we proclaim that faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Let's be singing together as we come along. Faith is the victory. Be standing together, please. You had, if you have a decision uh, to make, we encourage you to simply step forward or get an opportunity to uh, talk with us uh, afterwards. Uh, but let's sing together. Uh, faith is the victory.
encamped along the hills of mighty Christian soldiers rise and press the battle where the night shall veil the glowing skies against the flowing gales below. Let all our strength be hurled. chance to sign that card and pick that up. And second of all, uh, we encourage you, anybody that's interested in uh, learning more about the church, we've got a lunch for you and uh, just a little time together to talk in a, in a little class. We'd love to have you stay if you're able to stay. So we encourage you to do that. Okay, we're foundations class today. All right, let's uh, have our closing prayer and then we'll end up with uh, what a mighty God we serve. Father, thank you for extending your invitation to us. Lord, I, we are humbled in knowing that you did not have to do that. That was a choice that you made because you love us and you gave your son, Jesus Christ, and you gave us an RSVP, and you sealed it with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and you said, please respond. Please respond. Lord, help us have the wisdom to respond according to your word according to what we know will last for all eternity. Lord, help us to have the faith as we move forward with our purpose in life to be on mission for you and then our specific purpose through each season of life. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Have a great week, everybody.